Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a freshwater biologist, ichthyologist and a PhD student specialising and studying evolution of floral cards. Catfish is also known as pecos within the aquarium trade. So you might have noticed this tank is looking a little bit different. So I did have palm leaves in and I did a whole video on that and I took them out so they haven't completely decayed down. And I made the decision to do that because there's a lot about sort of botanicals maybe we don't talk about and I didn't really entirely think about. So I do have the branches that I freshly collected and obviously with them you can see that they are, um, they do have a lot of nutrients, even in dried sap that's going to have sugars, uh, anything like that. And it's not exactly, I don't think algae particularly is the only one to utilise it up. It's going to be bacteria as well. So bacteria are very good at proliferating very rapidly. They're going to proliferate feeding on those sugars. And that's why it kind of, so it ended up where I would get this sort of, um, it was a very interesting cycle, or not even a cycle, I would get, a lot more back, uh, bacteria build up and then I'd also get the filter feeding organism so this whole front of the tank was absolutely covered in Borticella, potentially Bryozoa. Um, I even, I've got a little bit left there um, and also potentially like Rotifus, anything that's going to be filter feeding. So obviously feeding on something in the water, but the water's pretty clear, so it's not entirely sediment, it's likely bacteria. And it's quite interesting when you think about um, it in that level, because a lot of people might add botanicals particularly very fast to a tank. And while my tank could easily cope, it was a bit of a pain when it came to oxygen levels, because not just are those bacteria going to be using um, the sugars, or the nutrients, they're also going to be using the oxygen and that increases what's known as the biological oxygen demand and then on top of feeding the fish, they're sort of feeding extra things and oh, oh that's the stalker sort of thing, it looked like there was something there, I was like what? no it's quite more of a phallus um, but um, so it's just kind of feeding the different nutrients and yes it was a hiding place but they had enough hiding places anyway um, and it kind of the way it kind of blocked the heater out which I'm not sure is great with um, transfer of the actual heating of the tank so I did pull it out and another reason I did is that I never, none of the fish actually really seem to utilise any of those biofilms and it could be for a variety of reasons. It could just not be what, it's likely not what they eat in the wild of those exact biofilms. It might just be that they're not adapted for feeding on that particular surface so they're not like, I should rasp on this surface. If I had um, otosynclus, rhino otosynclus, um, hyperpotoma, any of those sort of smaller feeding organisms, they probably would utilise it, but variants is just definitely not because they're going to be feeding on rocks, very hard flat surfaces, well, hard surfaces that aren't going to move with them. So even the sticks they don't really utilise. The, the only organisms that do are the snails. In the other tank, then cysts just don't even utilise um, much of the biofilms that grow on botanicals. And they, Obviously it could be actually these um, biofilms are also secreting different chemicals that don't make them so appetising. But getting back to oxygen, because I think with the palm leaves, obviously they were raised up, they're not blocking anything, they were somewhat trapping waste as they decayed, um, which means that you're going to get um, even more, it makes it more difficult to clean, remove detritus to remove waste that then is going to be utilized by decomposers so it's more bacteria more bacteria using oxygen and in a higher stock tank that isn't ideal at all so if you have a lower if you're looking at having loads of botanicals maybe think about lower stocking and also think about those oxygen levels especially when it comes to leaf litter and while we could talk about anaerobic decomposition 
we don't entirely know the rate of each there's a lot of sort of questions there and also is it building up before it's actually decayed I mean by that but how much of that is actually oxygenated and being the Aquarius is thinking it's not so anaerobic if there's roots if there's plants it's actually going to be oxygenated and how much of that bacteria is actually being used utilized by the fish we don't really know and there are a few studies on the topic as um, and as those bacterial loads do increase it does impact the fish when you look at the scientific literature it does reduce uh, growth rate of the fish or in the fish studied which is not to happen they're quite a hardy adaptable species it does also i think it was growth rate there were other elements of health but definitely as that bacterial load increases as the oxygen decreases another aspect is the temperature of your tank so while we think about botanicals for a large um, amount of different um, sort of tanks, you've also got to think about firstly, is it natural? Is it needed? Is there other ways of providing enrichment? Which is plenty. But also as temperature increases, oxygen saturation decreases down. And then on top of that, um, you've also got the decomposition increasing so their oxygen demand is going to be much higher so there is that balance and it is competing with fish yes fish can gasp but it depends on the fish and how much um, and their metabolic load is going to increase as temperature increases and it does depend on the individual fish themselves and it's not just botanicals i'm not just targeting botanicals because also nitrogen as in nitrates nitrites that requires oxygen so they're also competing for the oxygen and that also increases the biological oxygen demand of the tank um, so it's not the sort of simplest thing and nitrates influence this as well so and there's plenty there's quite actually a few studies that really look at well it's not there's not many studies on the fish we look at but when they are they're saying that definitely you don't want to go as high as some people are suggesting and because we don't know it's better to not if you get what i mean so that's why i don't so that's why i'm not really going to use the botanicals again and I have used them multiple times there will be photos or videos in the past where I've used loads of leaf litter and I've taken it out because it blocks the sofa and makes it difficult to actually remove that waste and they kind of say what was it madness or something is doing the same thing again and again expecting different results the one thing I would do again is these fresh branches the only issue is they do add nutrients maybe well, not nearly as not much as palms or some leaves, um, but you can actually see it um, on the other tank, particularly because it's getting a lot of blackbeard. But there's a little bit of blackbeard algae, so I think blackbeard algae. I've never had it. Well, I've not had it in quite a few years. My tanks are very low nutrients, I think, but it's starting to grow, and there was quite a few different uh, biofilms growing on the saps. So I definitely think it does need a little bit more consideration. If you're doing a blackwater tank, if it's naturally blackwater fish, go for it. But consider your oxygen levels. Oxygen saturation can be measured. You can get meters. They do need calibration. You can get liquid test kits, how reliable they are. I don't really think they're too great. But we can't measure oxygen, a biological oxygen demand in our fish tanks easily. I don't think at all. And there's a lot we can't see when it comes to that. So I'm going to end this video here. And if you have also, if you have any questions, then um, just write them in the comments. And I'm going to thank you for watching and goodbye. Or any suggestions for videos, then just write them in the comments. Anyway, thank you for watching and goodbye.